Jazz. Listen while you're home. Hello and welcome to the 38th episode of Quarren Jazz, your weekly update on what the jazz scene is doing during the year of 2020. I'm Geisa Fernandes, singer, songwriter and music researcher from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And your favorite podcast starts now! Before I introduce you to this week's guest, I would like to remind you that there are several ways to contact me, and they are all listed in the description of this episode. You will find a link to my webpage, geisafernandes.com, a directly link to my mailing list. I just need your email and your name, and voila, you are part of my community and you will get free regular content from me. Maybe you prefer to contact me through a social network. In this case, I would recommend you the group The Touring Jazz Musician on Facebook. It's a community that I've created to spread information on jazz festivals that accept submissions directly from artists. Got interested? The Touring Jazz Musician on Facebook. Join the discussion. You will also find a link to the Social Distancing Festival. First, our partner of Quarren Jazz, a great call for action that started back there in March. Check out this amazing initiative. And last, but certainly not least, you'll also find a link to the Quarren Jazz playlist on Spotify with all the songs included in the episodes and some extra surprises. Let's check what is new this week. On our Quarren Jazz playlist on Spotify, there we go! No talk, all jazz!
just got a taste from inside the rivers, a tune by my guest this week in choir and jazz. From England, Martin Archer, motor instrumentalist, composer, and with a quite long career also as a record producer. His label, Disco's Music, has recently released its 100th record. And we are also going to talk to the artist whose project was represented in this very special edition. As you've already realized, my dear listener, this is a very special episode of Quarren Jazz. Stay tuned! Hi, Martin! Thank you very, very much for your participation in Quarren Jazz. I know you have a lot to tell us, so let's start. And as usual, I would like you to tell our listeners a little bit about your story, your musical influences. Hi, my name's Martin Archer. I'm an instrumentalist, composer, improviser and record producer. And I'm based in Sheffield, which is in the north of England. I run a label called Discus Music, which has been around since the 1980s now. Mm -hmm. In terms of my own musical influences, I started listening to jazz as a teenager, borrowing records from my local record library, and starting off with the, the obvious greats, Miles, Mingus, Rollins, etc. But pretty quickly I discovered what would become a lifelong um, influence on me, which is basically the music of the 1970s black American avant-garde, um, starting off with Shep and then moving on to artists like the Art Ensemble of Chicago, Anthony Braxton, Henry Threadgill, Leo Smith. Those are the artists who've had the most, most lasting impact on my own jazz playing over the decades. That's basically what I'm interested in listening to and what I like to aspire to as a player myself. But growing up in the 1970s, I was equally enthusiastic about progressive rock music, initially with bands like Soft Machine, uh, Gentle Giant, Magma, uh, but then discovering uh, more experimental rock music sounds through Henry Cow, Faust and Can. So that's the other side of my musical coin. That's been the other thing that's been an abiding influence on me over the years. For many years, I played uh, on the live jazz circuit. For around about 10 years of that, I was with a, in a saxophone qu quartet called Horn Webb, and we played all over the place in the UK. But in the early 1990s, Those gigs were starting to dry up, and at the same time I reconnected with my earlier interest in experimental rock music, and I got involved in electronics, synthesizers, and I was also able to start my own recording studio at that time. I was able to start making my own records. So ever since then I've developed my interest basically as a recording musician rather than a performing musician, although I do occasionally do gigs. But what I really enjoy doing most of all is making records. And I like making them in the context of my label, Discus Music, where I haven't got anyone telling me what I can and can't do. I'm just able to get on and do it. And that suits me just fine. For many years, the Discus label was basically an outlet for my own music. But around about 10 years ago, I started getting more interested again in engaging as a jazz instrumentalist. And I started working with more jazz musicians that I'd met at that point, mainly people who were based in the north of England, who I met through doing my own music. And at that point, discus music started to change a little bit, because instead of just being a platform for my own music. It started also to be a platform for CD releases by my friends and colleagues. And then more recently, I've started to develop the label a little more from that and to release a wider range of musics. The label's 
grown very slowly, but we're now putting out our 106th release right now. Uh, and the label's doing pretty well for an independent. It's been around a long time and people know what the label is and what it does. I guess sometimes it confuses people a little bit because one month I'll be putting out a jazz album, the next month I'll be putting out an album of left-field rock music or improvised electronic music, but I think people are used to the fact that I switch around my own music quite a lot now. It's what I like doing and people ex- people don't expect me to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And that's a position that I like to be in. That's marvellous. And how did the year start for you, Martin? At the start of 2020, uh, my own latest uh, release at that time was uh, an album called Anthropology Band, which was a pretty ambitious uh, record. I'd, I'd been in the studio and I'd made I'd made a, an album which was uh, quite strongly influenced by the electric music of Miles Davis. So that was my new album at the time and I was very pleased with that. And I was very lucky to be able to do a handful of concerts uh, which we'd got set up for March 2020. And it's very rare for me to do major band concerts like that. Most of the gigs that I play are much smaller scale, uh, local, improvised music type things. It's very rare for me to actually take a larger group out on the road and do and do larger gigs. Unfortunately, we just managed to do those before lockdown started. It's fair to say that the lockdown period has affected me a lot less than virtually every musician I know. A lot of the people I know are constantly out on the gig circuit, playing several gigs a week, earning their living from doing that. And of course, that's all stopped. Their teaching stopped, uh, and even any commercial music gigs that they might have been doing have, have stopped. And that's, that's a great tragedy, just one of many tragic stories from around the whole world at the moment. For me, it made much less difference because my natural life as a musician uh, is within the recording studio. So what I was able to do once lockdown started was to concentrate on catching up some of my own studio projects. But I also took it as a cue to to really accelerate the releases by other musicians that I was putting out on, 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 on the label. So that might not have happened as quickly if it hadn't been for lockdown. So I put out a, a, a release of solo percussion music by Walt Shaw. I put out a, an album by the guitarist Craig Green, an American guy, called Love Notes in Binary Code. I had an album come out by my colleague Hervé Perez, an electronic album. I put out a music by a percussionist called Martin Pine, who uh, made a solo album for percussion and vibraphone. I put out an album that I'm going to tell you more about in a little while, solo piano music by Dirar Kalash. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I even got into a, a, a reissue with Tony Oxley, the great British improvised music drummer. Uh, I reissued his album February Papers with his cooperation. And I was also honoured to have very recently put out a, an album by my great friend Keith Tippett, who is very sadly missed. Uh, I've put out uh, an album called The Monk Watches the Eagle, which is a, a recording of choral work that he composed. So that's a lot of stuff that I just might not have had time to do if I'd if I'd been more involved in live music in this in this period. So lockdown really has been an opportunity for discus music to accelerate as a platform for other people's music. And of course, during that same period, I was able to finish a few of, of my own things. So that's a whole lot of stuff I'm <laughs> telling you about very quickly. And the best thing to do is to go on to Bandcamp and find Discus Music on there and you'll be able to see and hear everything that I've been doing recently. Wonderful. And what about your own music? Regarding my own music, I've been able to do quite a lot this year from my own studio. Um, we finished an album by one of my main 
uh, groups, uh, which is an eight-piece improvising rock music, uh, uh, an electronic music group called the Orchestra of the Upper Atmosphere. We've completed our fifth album during lockdown. My other main group is a trio called Das Rad, which again is a left field uh, rock music group, um, I guess going in a a kraut rock kind of direction. Uh, We were able to make an album with that trio, and I've also done uh, some initial work on a a new album in a duo, which I'm part of, uh, Inclusion Principle, which is an electronics uh, and laptop based group with my friend Hervé uh, Perez. And what's characterised all of those was that we were able to complete those records w- without actually meeting each other at all. Uh, and in particular, the Das Rad record, which is uh, one that I'm going to play you a track from, uh, a track called Inside Reverse, which I think is pretty representative of most of the things that I'm interested in in music. We were able to make that uh, the Das Rad album, uh, which is called Adios Al Futuro. The, the three of us didn't meet at all while we were making that record. And I'm, I guess I'm very lucky that while some of the records that I make do have to be recorded in the studio with everyone playing at the same time, the other half of my musical interest allows me to make records where collage and overdubbing is the normal way of doing it. Uh, and we're, we're able to work around the constraints of the lockdown, everyone in their own studio, collaborating online, using technology to exchange sounds and files, and even to mix the album uh, collaboratively by listening to it all in separate locations. So thank goodness for technology, because none of that could have happened 15 years ago, I guess. Talking about quarantine and talking about lockdown, how is the situation now in your area? In Sheffield, right? So right now, the situation here in Sheffield is the same as the situation right through the UK. We have a full lockdown in order to attempt to break the spiralling infection rate of COVID. So everyone's basically only got to leave their house for absolutely essential purposes. So I've got to keep concentrating on the things that I can do on my own or with remote collaboration. And fortunately, I've got four albums in progress at the minute, to which uh, all of which it's possible to continue in that way by keeping remote from my collaborators uh, and exchanging sound files and uh, making sure the music progresses because you can't stop the music. Musicians will always find a way of making music and adapting to adverse circumstances and I consider myself pretty lucky that my own music enables me to slip into that way of working pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And Martin, we listened to part (laughs) of Inside Reverse added to our Quarren Jazz playlist this week and I would like you to tell us a few words about this track and also about the track that you've selected for us to listen at the end of the episode. So you'll have guessed by now, it, it's it's really hard for me to, to, to choose just one track of my own music which represents what I do, because none of the records that I make and none of the bands that I'm involved in are particularly similar. But I've chosen a track by Das Rad called uh, Inside Reverse. It's based on a studio improvisation we'd done um a year or so previously, all all pre-Covid, but then uh, the editing and the arrangement and the final production uh, was was done at my own studio here, as was the rest of the album Adios Al Futuro. So I've chosen this track because it, uh, uh, it includes at least some element of all the things them that I'm interested in. It's uh, it, it's an intense piece of rock music, but it's got abstract elements and it's got uh, a compositional arrangement uh, element to it as well. So it's a little taste of all the things I like. It's, it's maybe like, uh, you know, you're hearing 30% of me here. Uh, you could go and listen to something else by me that would be completely different. But this is a track that I like very much. Um, Inside Reverse by Das Rad uh, and I hope you'll like it too So there's one album uh, that I want to 
talk about at a little more length, and it's uh, it's an important one because it's Discus's 100th release. Discus 100 CD is its catalogue title, and I never thought when I started the label that I would have uh, eventually produced quite so much music, but I have, and that's cool. In the run-up to this release, people were saying to me, well, Martin, I guess you're going to do something very special of your own for the 100th release. So I thought, no, actually, I'm not going to feature my own music for the 100th release. I'm going to turn to a musician who's new to the label, uh, who's not particularly well known to audiences in the United Kingdom. And the nice thing about this is that it, uh, uh, it came about entirely by chance. So the album is uh, an album of solo piano music by uh, Dirar Kalash. And Dirar is a musician who is based uh, in Ramallah, in Palestine. Dirar uh, was touring in Europe and the UK at the start of the year, which is something that he doesn't get opportunity to do very often. But while he was in, in England... Uh, an improvising musician called David Birchall hooked him up with a sound engineer called Simon Raynal. And he was able to meet Dirar at the University of Huddersfield, where they have a beautiful piano, beautiful Steinway piano in a beautiful concert room with a fantastic acoustic. Now, I think this is the the really moving part of the story. Um, Dirar has no access to a decent piano Uh, in his hometown. Opportunities to perform there are virtually nil. Uh, There's no access to a good piano. And Dirar was actually overwhelmed by having access to such a fine space and such a fine instrument. And his instinct led him to abandon the original plan to record some compositions. And Dirar instead made some improvisations which I think are very austere uh, but at the same time are very powerful and moving. Now I didn't know any of this was going on at all. I didn't even know that Dirar was in the country. He did, he did a little handful of gigs that for whatever reason didn't come onto my radar and it was only when Simon Raynal approached me after lockdown had started and he said uh, Martin look I've got these rec- I've got the I've made these recordings by Dirar it's it, it, it's improvised music and uh, so I listened to it and I thought well th- this is great this uh, uh, it's not easy music it's v- it's very austere it's very spacious it's very controlled you've really got to concentrate on every note that Dirar plays but I thought this would make a great statement to be Discus Music's 100th release. So fortunately, I was able to get in touch with Dirar, who by this time was back in Palestine and dealing with the day-to-day uh, difficulties of surviving in a, a very difficult situation at the best of times, let alone um, uh, surviving during Covid. Anyway, I was able to make the arrangements with uh, Dirar to uh, choose which pieces would be on the CD and to collaborate on the artwork and make sure the sleeve note was uh, w- was was good. So I'm I'm very proud that this rather unlikely uh, release for Discus is my hundredth release, and I hope it will bring uh, Dirar some uh, additional notice and good fortune. The track that you're going to hear a little bit of, because uh, the CD only has two very long tracks on it, uh, but you're going to hear an extract, as much as time allows, from a piece called A Rift in Time. So thank you for listening to me. You probably won't have heard my name before, but hopefully you'll feel moved to find Discus Music on Bandcamp and take a listen to what we do and I hope you'll find a lot of sounds to enjoy there. Thank you Martin very much for this talk. Congratulations for the 100th release. It's amazing. And dear listener, before we go to the track, we have a little surprise. 
As I said in the beginning of this episode, we also had the opportunity of talking to Dirar Kalash. Hi, Dirar. Thank you very much for finding the time for talking to us, taking part in this double treat <laughs> episode. Thank you very much indeed. So, I would like you to tell us about your story and the story of this album. I am Dirar Kalash. I'm Palestine. I'm based between Palestine and Berlin. I've uh, did my studies in the Netherlands in uh, sonology. Um, it's a little bit difficult for me to describe my uh, musical practices and influences because they range really from how I prefer to say it, from like rather between like let's say uh, genres or styles. Uh, I'd rather say that it's It ranges from, like, let's say, quietness and loudness, a multitude of sounds and uh, instruments in different contexts, sometimes improvisational, sometimes compositional. Um, I think, like, comes naturally through being exposed to uh, a wide range of uh, musical artists, from, let's say, Sandra, Uh, Albert Eiler, and also Stockhausen, Martin Feldman. Uh, it's really, let's say, uh, uh, wide-ranging influences. How was the beginning of 2020 for you, Didar? How did the year start? Uh, really enough, this year really started very well with... Uh, Like, literally the first two weeks were full of concerts and uh, recording sessions for different projects also, like some solo and some with uh, groups of people. It was also uh, the time where Quietude, of Quietude, the, my last album was recorded in Manchester. Somehow I had uh, to leave for Palestine by the end of of February for some, uh, some work that was supposed to happen there. And then the lockdown started, flights started to get cancelled and things like that. So from then on, like let's say from mid-February until now, um, as, uh, as it is for uh, everybody else, musicians and the musicians, it's been really chaotic and, uh, and hectic. Of course, no gigs, no recording sessions, nothing of that up until now. So, I mean, it's really affected me mostly because I'm, I'm rather like more active as a performer and uh, as uh, uh, like in the context of live concerts. Right? Uh, so, in eight or nine months with no concerts and uh, it also somehow makes it more difficult in terms of like let's say uh, internet collaborations and live streams which are somehow come on now uh, but it's uh, still uh, difficult for me because I don't think that it's really that like let's say this online thing or the internet as platform I, I don't think that it really fits with uh, what I do normally I need the interaction with the audience I need to hear the sound in space you know not through headphones and things like that did you try live streaming yeah I've, I've done that a couple of times but still I mean it really doesn't feel the same for me So I spend most of the time working on compositions or practicing. Uh, that's somehow like good, but it's still, you know, as a gigging musician, it's uh, really tough also financially. And I mean, that's important also in compositional context, you know. If I want to sit down on the table or in the, uh, like, let's say, working with the instruments, that also... I need somehow a kind of financial security and uh, peace of mind in order to carry on with that. You know? I certainly understand what you mean. 
No peace of mind, no art. What is the current situation in your area? Uh, as I said, I'm still in Palestine since mid-February. Lockdowns come and go. Uh, currently, we are in a lockdown. It's not that strict, but it affects everything, of course. And there are no gigs, so I'm not playing. I would like you to tell us something about your new project. I know that you had to make some, some changes to adapt a bit from your original plan. What can you tell us about this recording? The recording of this album came out somehow as a surprise, actually, because I was supposed to record a totally different material, but in the musical language also, and also from uh, the sonic uh, aspect. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about what actually was my intention, because, I mean, simply it's not relevant. Uh, what matters is that, like, when, when I entered uh, St. Paul's Cathedral uh, in Huddersfield, started playing the, the grand piano there, I felt that, like, the, the whole space was not really the best for my initial ideas. But the good thing also that was so unique that I started to just uh, improvise, explore the sounds of but the space and the instruments uh, at the um, Huddersfield uh, St. Paul's Church. It was really special and there was so much to explore in terms of, of, of sound there. And I went on with that. You know? I just sat on the piano and we started recording and it was, I think, four hours of playing which were really special for me also because um, I mean it was the first time that I play such a fine instrument you know um, as a musician I always thought that you can do anything with uh, any instrument you can you can play and I really uh, don't have this approach to the prestige of instruments but I can't hide the fact that it was really a very very unique instrument and very unique space which which was like really special in terms of what it could offer me in terms of uh, of means and material to work with in terms of sound and in terms of musical ideas also all right thank you dirar so much for your participation in quarant jazz thank you martin to Really appreciated having you guys here. And thank you, my dear listener, for staying with us. This was the 38th episode of Quarren Jazz. I'm Geisa Fernandes, singer, songwriter and music researcher from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And if you'd like to go on this conversation, just contact me. In the description of this episode, you will find a link to my web page, geisafernandes.com, where you find my contact form. There's also a link to my mailing list for those who'd like to get free regular content from me. Or on Facebook, join the group The Touring Jazz Musician, named after a guide I wrote on information for those artists who'd like to contact jazz festivals directly. You know, there are festivals with open submission processes. That's what we talk about from the group The Touring Jazz Musician on Facebook. See you there! Well, my dear listener, it was once more great to enjoy your company in Quarant Jazz, but it is time to bid you farewell. Till next week and now, ladies and gents, a rift in time.
Quarren Jazz Listen while you're home Quarren Jazz A podcast by Geisa Fernandes